Hey, paper callers, let's talk about television advertising. Now, television advertising is absolutely massive. Almost 100% of the US population watches television on almost a daily basis, okay? And so between Fox, CBS, ABC, and NBC, television reaches 120 million households, and that accounts for more than 300 million individual daily viewers. And so television advertising is still the largest medium available for advertising anywhere. It's also one of the most prolific. And believe it or not, there's a ton of inventory available and it works really well for paper call. Now there's a whole bunch of different types of uh, platforms and networks to advertise on TV, but it breaks down to three different main ones. And that is broadcast, which is the old school over the airways antenna that sits on top of a house or television. Cable TV, which is like Comcast or Spectrum and comes through coaxial cable that goes into a box on your TV. Or satellite TV, like Direct TV or Dish Network that reaches audiences in the United States and Europe from a satellite in space. Now, the main differentiator that you should be aware of when it comes to television versus online is that with TV advertising, you pay the reverse of online. And so you actually pay less money to target a specific geographic area, whereas online, if you wanna target a very specific geographic area, you actually end up paying more money for that targeting. And so it's the opposite. Now with TV, if you wanna reach a really big audience that's nationwide concurrently at the same time, you're gonna pay a lot more money for that. And so uh, it's really important that you get your targeting correct with TV because it keeps your cost way down regardless of your conversion rate. So there are some companies out there that'll do CPA television advertising for you, but the likelihood that you're gonna be able to get one of these companies to work with you when you're first getting started is very low because they want to run proven advertising campaigns for proven advertisers and proven markets and then they just go and create a better commercial and manage the entire process for you but if you just show up at their doorstep and you're like i have an offer will you please make me a commercial and do all the ads for me on cpa the answer is likely going to be no unless you're a major u.s brand because there's way too much risk associated with figuring that information out. So what are the pros and cons of TV advertising for pay per call? Well, one of the pros is there's massive reach. When you find a winning campaign, scale is almost unlimited. If you find a way to reach TV audiences and make it profitable, well, your reach is only then a math equation and you can hit the entire United States. There's also less competition than for online inventory because it's a lot more complicated to do a TV ad. It's really complicated to split test it. There's more upfront investment that you're gonna have to make to even try. So there is a lot less competition. Now where the competition does lie is with branded advertisers. You know, companies like Coca-Cola and McDonald's become your competition instead of some guy named Steve in his parents' basement ripping off your Facebook campaigns, okay? So the less competition with TV is because of the higher barrier of entry, which is why it's exciting for me because I like high barrier of entry type campaigns. Now, another pro uh, that you may or may not morally agree with, but for me it's a pro because I'm a marketer by trade, is that done right, you can subconsciously program people. You can get in their heads make them understand what your product is and then associate it with something in their brain permanently, right? We all know the song, to all beef, patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. And even though I can't sing, I know the song. I can hear the music in my head and I don't even eat McDonald's. I haven't had it in almost 10 years. I won't go anywhere near it, but I will never get that song out of my head because I saw it, I saw it as a kid growing up on TV and it's just not going anywhere. So you can literally 
subconsciously program people with television advertising. And that's a very scary, but very powerful thing. And done right, it can be extremely profitable. It's very hard to copy a TV campaign. And so there are no smash and grab drive-by affiliates that are going to come rip off your campaign and then run it themselves. It's uh, too complicated for the lazy. You got to produce a TV commercial. You got to negotiate over the phone, God forbid, with account reps. You have to come to contractual and distribution terms. You have to negotiate rates. Okay, so it's not for the lazy and it's not for those that only have a hundred bucks to test either. And so it's just really hard to copy a TV campaign. You also can really only understand where a TV campaign is running. If you're in the market, it's being run too, and you have no idea what other channels it's running on or what other geographic locations it's running on or what other time slots it's running on. And so you can't just steal someone's marketing plan because it's hard to get, okay? You can get insider information when it comes to TV, but that's gonna be through having an incredibly good relationship with your account representative and you're only gonna get the information that that account representative has. So if you're maybe running on multiple networks, different TV platforms, different channels, uh, your ad rep may not have access to all that information. So it's just gonna be much harder for competitors to steal compared to online advertising. And one of the pros, which I consider a pro, is that there's a much higher cost to test. If you wanna test, multiple creatives and you want to test multiple angles to actually run your campaign you're gonna to have to pay a lot more money to do that with television advertising than you would online advertising and so it keeps the people that have less resources and that are lazier and aren't willing to invest out and so those are all the people that typically want to do smash and grab online campaigns will steal your creative and then just try and trick consumers uh, the shitty ones. So it keeps the shitty ones out. Also, there's more compliance with the television ad. They're not going to let you make a bunch of ridiculous claims like you can on the internet. Um, there's just a higher standard. And so that's a good thing, not a bad thing, especially when it comes to our space. So some of the cons of television advertising, it's harder to make changes using third party production methods. Um, because, excuse me, it's harder to make changes if you're using third party production methods. And what I mean by that is if you outsource the production of your TV commercials to another company, it's going to be hard to change things. You got to go through a rep, they then have to change the ad, and then the ad has to be re rendered. And then you take that render and you give it to your TV network advertising rep, and then they're going to give it to the network and they schedule it. Okay, and so if you're like, oh, I wanna make a quick change, it's not like going into Facebook ads and then making a quick change and duplicating an ad. There's a process to it, which means that you have to be on top of your game, specifically when you design your advertisement and you produce your commercial. You need to proof it many, many times. There's more work that goes into it. It's harder also to target the right audience, specifically without research with television ads. It's also the reason, one of the reasons why I like it, because you have to do more research. So you need to know who's watching these channels at what times and what geographic areas, and you really have to think about who your audience is gonna be so that you can target the right people. It's not just snap your fingers, click a mouse, and then boom, you get to test. You really have to put some effort in. Another con is people can TiVo your advertisement. They can record it, they can fast forward through it, um, some of the tracking for television advertising when it comes to viewership isn't ideal. Um, and so you just have to be aware of these things. There's nothing you can do about that if you want to play in the arena. Now, there's also, as I've said, a higher cost to test than online advertising. To place a TV spot somewhere and to get an ad rep to care about you, you're not going to be able to do that with $50. You're going to need a few thousand dollars of test budget for your first run. I mean, like bottom of the barrel is like a thousand bucks if you can find a desperate ad rep with remnant traffic that maybe works from home, okay? <laughs> like you're gonna need 2,500 bucks or 5,000 even to run a test. And so you need to do your research to get it right. And then there's gonna be a bigger learning curve than online advertising. And that learning curve is going to be slower because you have to wait 
for it to run, for the actual commercial to air on television. And then if you're gonna do it correctly, you need your viewers to see it multiple times. It's like a snowball. You're not gonna get your results from one commercial. You need to run multiple commercials. People need to see it seven to 10 times to really know what your penetration rate's gonna be like in a specific time. You want people to see it over and over and over again. And then finally they're like, ah, okay, I'll pick up the phone. All right. And immediate campaign pausing is not possible. Okay. And so you need to make sure that your buyers are lined up with backup buyers and load balancing and your call tracking. Otherwise you got a TV commercial that goes live and your buyer goes down or you have an issue. You're going to know how many calls you got, but you're not going to get compensated for those calls. And so you need to make sure that you're ready to actually receive them. And so I will say transparently that TV advertising is super exciting and it's a lot of fun, but this is probably not your best entrance into paper call marketing. You should start online and we'll talk about that later in planning your business, but this is a more advanced or boss level place to operate than online advertising. But once you get to this level, if you can dominate it, you can make millions and millions of dollars advertising on TV. And if you don't believe me, I want you to spend some time watching Fox News. Not for 20 minutes, not for an hour. I want you to like spend a day watching Fox News. And that may be painful for some of you, but I don't care. I don't care what your views are. That's not what this is about. What this is about is the fact that Fox News has a very specific audience that leans white and older and male. And what you'll notice is that almost every single commercial during some shows are pay per call campaigns. And so, oh, if you watch Fox News for an entire day, you could actually see what works and how they do it. So please take the time and do it. And next thing you know, you'll be watching that stuff all day, every day, probably on mute because the commercials are the interesting part. All right, if you wanna get really advanced, what you do is you find the networks that you're considering advertising on, you TiVo it all, and then you, or you record it all, and you send that off to a, a virtual assistant that does video editing, and you have those people send you back cuts of all the commercials so you can watch them, all right? Pro tip. So how does TV advertising work in a nutshell? And this is gonna be a very simplistic run through here, but just so you understand the process. The first thing you're gonna do is contact the TV networks or advertising brokers for rates. Now, let's be real for a minute. If you're watching this, you're probably not spending millions of dollars on TV advertising. So the direct networks may or may not talk to you, or they may not be the right fit. Or believe it or not, brokers and aggregators can actually get you better deals because they buy so much advertising. So TV is super old school. If you do not have the volume, no one cares about you. So you need to find brokers and contacts who can help you through that process. Now, next, after you find the people that you're gonna to talk to and potentially buy your media from, and it shouldn't be one, it should be many. So you can talk to a bunch of them and learn as much as you can. You're gonna determine your schedule, the shows you're gonna run your ads in, and the distribution markets, the distribution areas. So the less you're gonna pay for advertising, the less control you're gonna have over it with TV. So if you're like, I want the cheapest spots I can possibly get, you're not gonna determine your schedule, your show, or your distribution area. You're gonna have like no control over anything, but you'll get it super cheap. Now, that's like run of, adver uh, run of network advertising for pop-ups, right? You don't know what you're gonna get, you have no control over it, but it's super cheap. And so if you can make that work, and some people do, frankly, um, you can make a lot of money, but it's gonna be very challenging. You're gonna need an offer that has a massively wide appeal and you're gonna have no targeting for it. You're also not gonna get a lot of repeat views unless you spend a ton of money. And so it's really important to understand that if you wanna actually determine your schedule, your spot, what shows it's running in, and the distribution areas, you're gonna to have to spend more for each spot. And there are trade-offs for that, and we'll cover. So um, next, you're gonna to wanna to comparison shop different networks and mediums and brokers. You want to get a few proposals at different tiers. You want to know what you're going to get for a thousand, for five thousand, for ten thousand dollars. Ask them where do the price breaks happen. 
what amount of money do I need to spend? And whether you're ready for that level or not, you should understand it so you know what you can build up to. You need to know what's possible first and then figure out a way to capitalize on it, just like anything in life. And so next, once you know who you're gonna advertise with, how much it's gonna cost, what you're gonna do, you finalize your placements and your flight dates. So you're like, all right, in two weeks from now, I'm gonna run a spot on the Game Show Network at eight o'clock at night, and that spot's gonna play three times every day for seven days or whatever it is. Now remember, it is much more effective to run TV advertising to the same audience multiple times than it is to run the same advertisement to lots more people, but only once, okay? Repetition is the key to success with this. You need to make them see you over and over and over again before they pull the trigger, okay? Now, once you know your flight date, your placement and all that, then you're gonna create your TV commercial with tracking phone numbers. And this gets a little tricky. We're gonna talk about it more in this program, but you actually need to make a commercial, which can seem daunting, but I just want you to know before I did this, I created a TV commercial. I was curious. I hadn't done one in a long time. And so I did it entirely with stock video. It cost me about $480. I taught myself iMovie and I did it, okay? And then I realized that it wasn't really a big deal to make your own TV commercial and mine's kind of crappy. I don't know if it'll convert, but I think the point here is for about 500 bucks and a few hours of your time, you can actually create a TV commercial. So there's no excuses, okay? I don't wanna hear any comments about how it's too hard to make a TV commercial because if I can figure it out in a period of like four hours and 500 bucks and it turned out pretty decent, you can too, okay? And so once you've created your TV commercial, and I highly recommend you spend a lot more time than four hours on it, all right, you're gonna deliver that commercial to the network. You need to make sure that you talk to your network about what format, what resolution, and the specifics about what, what that commercial needs to technically be so that it can run properly. It needs to be the correct length. If it's not the correct length, it won't run properly. Uh, they're still gonna bill you for the same amount of length. So if you're gonna do a 30 second or a minute spot or 45 seconds or whatever it is, if your commercial's a few seconds short, that's your loss, not theirs. Then you wanna confirm your flight dates with the rep. So what the TV networks will do sometime or the brokers will do is they'll move around the schedule. And if you don't ask them for confirmed flight dates, they just assume you don't want them and they move the schedule around. And they may do it last minute. So confirm your flight dates a couple days before the commercial is gonna air so that they lock you into the schedule and someone else gets bumped, all right? If someone else gets bumped because they're lazy, great. Not my problem, all right? And then once it runs, I want the viewer statistics. I wanna know at what times on what networks did it actually run to see if it, it delivered, if they delivered on my flight dates. Because if they didn't and the results were good, I'm gonna use that to negotiate next time. I'm gonna be like, y'all owe me, okay? And so next, we're gonna review the results with conversions, obviously. We're gonna go into our call tracking, we're gonna monitor this, we're gonna see if people call. It can take up to 24 hours or 36 hours. Sometimes, depending on the scale of your campaign, you might get calls that trickle in for weeks because people TiVo it, all right? And then we're gonna determine the placement ROI. If you're smart and you put a different tracking number in for each placement, then you will know which placement got you the ROI you want. And then you're gonna go back to the network, you're gonna add more spend and negotiate the rates down based on results, right? Longer commitments, more spend, lower rates per spot, higher profit margins for you if you achieve profitability. Now, choosing a market is a complicated thing. You need to know who your customers are, you need to know what they want, you need to know where they live, and you need to know what they watch. And so your broker, or your network should be able to help guide you with this. And that's why I highly recommend that you talk to multiple so that they all can give you the answers to the same questions. Now, three different networks gives you suggestions and answers to the same question that are the same. Well, you can probably assume with a high degree of confidence that the information is accurate. And if it's your first time, you need to trust the account reps a little bit because they want your money, 
But to a TV account rep, $5,000 is absolutely nothing in commission. And so if they're giving you information, they kind of need to give you information that'll help you be successful because frankly, to them, you're not worth anything yet. Keyword there is yet. And so if they serve you properly, then you can become a valued account, right? And so uh, obviously I chose some Fox News viewers again because they're fun to watch, okay? They, <laughs> they're amusing people. And so you need to understand your market. Where do these people live? What cities, what geographic areas, what zip codes, right? If you need old people, Florida and Phoenix, where are those retirement communities? If you want people who are rich in the 1%, San Francisco and New York City are great locations to advertise to, okay? So you need to think about who your customers are and where they geographically live. That's first and foremost. And then what you need to understand is what do your ideal customers watch, okay? If it's senile old people, late night TV is a good place to start. So is the Game Show Network, right? What networks run reruns of TV shows that were popular when they were younger? Like, who is watching Nick at Night still? Old rerun episodes. Or my dad, okay? My dad loves Star Trek The Next Generation, okay? So if I were gonna market to my father, who's 68 or 70 years old, I think it's terrible that I don't know that, but it's somewhere in that area, right? I would be like, all right, where's the Star Trek at? And then I would hit that audience. And I know that the audience watching Star Trek reruns are probably similar to my dad, okay? You know, old people watch game shows, business people in the 1% watch CNBC, Republicans watch Fox News, you know? Like think about who your audience is and what they watch. Next, you think about the gender. Who watches The View, all right? It's probably not men, maybe a few, okay? Depending on the demographic of man you're going after. And who watches hunting shows? Like, who's watching, uh, you know, shows on fishing on Discovery Channel, right? Probably male, okay? Probably in a specific age range. And so this is not an exact science. It's never going to be an exact science with TV because we don't have the granularity we do with online advertising. But if you think about what you're doing and just write it out and figure out where your demographic lives, and what they watch, it's not hard to target these people. It's actually pretty easy to find the people that you're looking for. And if you go super targeted that's interest-based on like cable or dish, you're gonna pay a lot less for it, right? Because a lot less people watch the specialty shows. And so you can hit your demographic for a lot less. And once you move from the major broadcast networks like ABC down to like A&E or the fishing channel or whatever it is, the rates get more reasonable because the viewership is less, the coverage is less, okay? So that's how it works. You should always ask your network representative for demographic information and show suggestions. So before you talk to them, you should know who your audience is and then ask them suggestions for spots to reach that audience. If you're like, all right, I wanna hit Texas and I really wanna hit influential 1% type people that buy and are interested in outdoorsy stuff, what networks and TV shows do you suggest? Like, it's that simple, okay? You don't need to know a lot about it. You can just ask a few simple questions. They'll give you the answers, and then you're off to the races. Now, producing a video can get a little tricky, all right? Pro professional production's usually gonna cost about 2,500 bucks on the cheap if you can find like, I don't know, some local kids that are trying to make music videos and get them to do a commercial instead. All right, you get what you pay for, of course, um, on up to about $25,000. So a really professionally produced commercial for a local brand, like maybe an auto dealership or something, is gonna be in the range of $25,000. Now, the, the beautiful thing behind this is you have a lot of options, so don't let these numbers scare you. And if you're smart and you're willing to put in the work, you don't need a lot of money to do this. Now, nationwide brands will spend 50,000 to half a million or more for big campaigns like Super Bowl ads, but we don't need to worry about that, okay? If anyone watching this is producing Super Bowl ads for their paper call campaign, I mean, hit me up. I'm taking you out to dinner because you need to teach me. <laughs> We're doing this backwards if that's the case, all right? So let's say you're on a shoestring budget and you're like, Adam, 
how do I get away with making a TV commercial that's creative and not spending any money because I want to conserve as much as possible? I'm like, great. That's the type of thing I want to tackle because it requires uh, thought process and effort. And so what you really need to do that at this point is an iPhone, right? An iPhone is an amazing camera. You can do really great stuff with it. So you can get 4K video out of it. Most TVs and networks aren't gonna require 4K video even, so you're good to go. And so I highly recommend that with a smooth. A smooth is like a little camera mount, okay? It's like this and it attaches to your iPhone and it stabilizes, it's a gyroscopic stabilizer for your iPhone and it allows you to twist and turn and move without getting really bouncy footage. So if you need to do some real world footage, I recommend smooth in an iPhone. And if you're doing stationary where you just need someone talking like me right now, do not have someone hold a smooth or hold the camera like this. You're gonna get jitter and you're gonna get bumpiness. What you need is a tripod. You can go on Amazon and get a tripod for $15 and it's Amazon. So, I mean, return it when you're done. I don't care, do whatever you need to do, okay? And so that's all you need. Now, if you wanna raise the professional level of your footage, what you need is a simple light kit. If you're gonna be doing like I'm filming right now, uh, I don't really care about my video's production quality, but you do for a commercial, you need a simple light kit. These can be about 150 bucks and they're super easy to set up. You don't need any skill level, just set up the lights, look through your iPhone on the tripod, and you're gonna have a basic idea of what it's gonna look like, and you're already ahead of a lot of really crappy local TV commercials. If you wanna see some bad commercials, go watch local TV uh, or local evening six news or whatever it is. You're gonna see some terrible commercials, but they still work. So you don't need to be a professional production crew to make a TV commercial. Now, if you don't wanna be in the TV commercial and you don't need to record any humans, I highly recommend some stock videos and some royalty-free stock music, okay? And so what you want there is royalty-free. That means you don't have to pay anything when it airs, you own it and you can use it for whatever you want. It's cheap. Um, for a couple hundred bucks, you can get a whole bunch of footage. Some sites even give kind of crappy, but free footage. And so you can just cobble together uh, some type of advertisement for what you want to do. Now, there's also some companies that'll record like testimonials. You can find them on Fiverr. And there's some companies that will also even have like a person dressed in a suit with a white background, say your message for you. You get that for maybe four or 500 bucks or sometimes even less. And so that with a little bit of editing, you can do this on your own fairly cheaply. Now for editing, if you have a Mac, I recommend Final Cut Pro. Nice and easy, not terribly expensive. Uh, if you're on a PC and you don't know how to edit any video at all, like you're just diving in, Camtasia Studio is pretty idiot proof, frankly. They got some tutorials on there. Um, I prefer Adobe Premiere, it's a better platform. But if I need to do something quick, or our marketing team at Ringba needs to do something quick, we have Camtasia licenses. And it's just like real quick. You can pop out an advertising video if you have stock video. Uh, in a couple minutes. Really easy text overlays, really easy everything you need to do to make a video work, right? And you wanna keep in mind like volume level balance and music level balance. Uh, you wanna make sure that music level is low, your volume level is high so that there's no confusion. And if you're going to have voice, record it professionally, get yourself a Yeti microphone off Amazon for a hundred bucks. Uh, it's what I'm using right now and then Obviously, I'm in a giant room with Echo, and I apologize for that. If you're gonna record, you know, you can even take your Yeti microphone and a laptop and pull a uh, uh, down blanket over your head on a carpeted floor in your parents' basement and record the voiceover for a TV commercial that gets put on national TV. It's really that easy. There's no excuses for this. You shouldn't be scared of it. Um, everything can be fixed in editing, all right? You just need to record the raw footage and the raw audio, and then it's super easy to layer it together. I challenge you to try it. It's a lot of fun to do, uh, and it's not complicated. Now, once you level up and you wanna do infomercials and you've proven that your product uh, works and the way you're approaching it works and you have all your backend buyers in order, you can actually go out and find companies that will produce infomercials for you. Um, but homegrown videos are proven to be more successful. 
And so if you do your own homegrown video, you'll probably do much better. I don't know if you've seen this before, but there's a lot of marketing research out there that suggests if the owner of a product or the founder of a product goes out and pitches it himself, that people have more confidence in that brand. They have more confidence in what's going on behind the scenes because they actually get to meet the person behind it. And so when you see a lot of infomercials on TV, uh, you can see the owners of the company and they're like actual owner or John Smith, the owner of whatever. Um, and they do that on purpose so that you know who the owner is, the owner becomes familiar, and then a level of trust and a bond is created. And so you're not gonna screw it up, you can do everything in post-processing and editing, but you know, I highly recommend that you just put yourself out there too, and it works. That's why I'm in the videos right now. There's no secret behind this. I'm not gonna have one of my marketing team people actually be in these training videos, because I want you to trust us and our brand and to see that there are real people behind what's going on, people that care. And no one cares more than the founders or the owners of a company. And so that's why putting them in the videos was super successful. In fact, if we go back in time and we think about Wendy's commercials, uh, they used to have Dave in the Wendy's commercials. And Dave's gone now. Uh, we'll miss him. But that was one of the most successful marketing campaigns on TV back in the day. Owner was in it. They did studies about it. Okay. And so... Now that we have our video, and you can produce the TV uh, video before you actually negotiate for airtime if you want, I think it's important to have your commercial ready. Uh, most networks are going to be able to work with most video formats, and if you make your commercial and have it in one of those studio uh, softwares that I mentioned on the previous slide, you can export it in pretty much any format, or you can get a plugin that'll export it in any format they want. Um, and so you should have that ready. It's up to you what order you want to do it in. I, if, you, if I were new and the order I did originally do it in when I researched it uh, and ran my first TV commercial, which I think was eight years ago, um, back when I actually promoted things as opposed to making software, was the order I had on the first slide. I talked to people first to figure out all the specs and feasibility of it, then I made my commercial. But once you're ready to go, you have to negotiate airtime. Okay, and you're gonna have to pay up front and you're gonna wanna pay up front. If you're doing a multi-month spot or a multi-week spot, the networks and the brokers will let you break up payments, but it's much easier to negotiate if you can pay your entire contract up front because when the money comes in is when the reps secure their commissions. And so what you wanna do is negotiate from a place of strength and understand how your sales rep gets paid. And you can even just be transparent with them and just say, Jim, you get paid when I pay this entire contract, right? And he goes, yeah. So, all right, well, let's work together. Can you hook me up on this and I'll just pay the entire thing up front? That's how I would do it. I would just ask. And you know what? They're probably going to say, sure. You'd be surprised how easy it is to get some concessions if you just set up a win-win scenario because that's a win for you and it's a win for the account rep because you're probably not gonna ask for your money back once you've sent it or you may not actually be able to get your money back. Make sure you understand your contract before you do this. But if you're gonna do the commercial anyways and you're gonna run it through, you might as well pay up front to get a discount, right? Cash is king. Next, you wanna commit to a multi-week schedule and you wanna start out by pricing less spots. So you wanna ask them, you know, all right, let, let's say I run a few spots. What's the pricing going to be? And then you come back and say, all right, well, what if I do a two-week flight with a spot every weeknight, right? Okay, well, what if I do a four-week or a six-week or an eight-week or whatever it is, schedule? What are my discount levels? And then they'll discount it based on how long the contract is and how many spots you actually agree to buy. And then once you've done that, pay up front and you can secure some solid discounts. Remember, the more you buy, the better rates you're going to get. So when you start testing, even if you just break even or you lose a little bit of money, don't get discouraged. You just need to amp up the volume to make the economics work. It is just a math equation. And at any time you can share that math equation with your account rep and see if they can work with you. If you're like, yeah, I broke even, uh, I can get my payouts up a little bit with volume but I need to get the pricing down. I need to make at least, you know, 25% margin. So let's say I can get 5% on the back end. What do I need to do to get my rates down 20%, 30%? Oh, 
or go for it. What do I need to do to get my rates down 50%? Just ask them what you need to do and then they start presenting you with numbers. Those are milestones and all of those milestones are negotiable, but you need to get them out there on the table before you can design your plan. So I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when dealing with any type of media buying is they don't get all their options all the way up from the get-go. All right, maybe my budget's five grand, but I wanna know what I get for 10, for 25, for 50, 100,000. I wanna know what's possible. Because if I find out that for 100K, I can get my price down 60%, and that's fictitious, by the way, um, I'm gonna be thinking about this in an entirely different way. If I lose half the money I make, uh, or all of it, I'm still gonna be thinking about it in an entirely different way if I know what's possible at scale. And so a lot of the times what'll happen is you come in cheap, you pay more for the spot, and then you disappear because you don't think it works because you don't know what you get when you spend a hell of a lot more money. And so that can be the difference between success and failure. And if you know that you can succeed at those higher commitment levels, you go back to your account rep and you see if they'll take a flyer on you, a long shot, and just come in like, man, if I were spending $50,000 on a contract and those rates were lower, this would be profitable for me and we could have a long-term relationship. So help me out here, man. How do we do that? Can I agree to spend a quarter million dollars with you over a period of six to eight months uh, and pay in milestones? And then can you put a clause in there that lets me get out of the contract at any time but gets me the discount? I'm sure that a lot of people aren't asking for something like this, but the upside's really big for the account rep too. And so by working and collaborating, you can actually get deals like this. And so a long time ago, there was a, a period in time where if you wanted to advertise with Yahoo, the account reps got paid by the amount of money committed to in the insertion order in the contract, right? That's how they got their monthly bonuses or their quarterly or annually, whatever it was was how many contracts they had signed. And when I knew this, I was like, oh, wait a second. So you're telling me I can commit to a million dollars next month and spend for you, get all the discounts on that million bucks and then start at $1,000 a day? And she's like, yeah, I'll even get credit for it. And I'm like, well, hot damn, let's do a million dollar contract. I didn't spend a million dollars, but I made money, they made money. Uh, and I got the discounts I needed and anyone that wasn't willing to figure out the game so that they can work their way through uh, didn't have that opportunity. And so there's going to be a lot of different rules and a lot of different structures available when you're negotiating with a TV network. You need to figure them all out. And the easiest way to do that is simply to ask your ad rep to talk to them, to create a relationship. Okay. And they're going to be willing to do it. And so uh, one of the calls that's included with this course down in the companion materials, our marketing team called an ad rep at 7.30 p.m. on a Friday Pacific time. Later we found out that ad rep was located on the East Coast, okay? That means that at 10.30 at night on a Friday, this woman was willing to pick up the phone and teach someone how to buy TV uh, advertising placements from them. Okay, because we had someone that had no idea what they're doing do this so that you guys can see it's not that complicated. All right, and so you can create relationships, you can find good ad reps, and the one we talked to is below. I recommend you call her because she's willing to go above and beyond. And if she gets 100 phone calls from this, I'll be super geeked, all right? I have no financial ties with her. I didn't even speak to her, okay? Um, but back, back to the, the program here. Um, you also need to ask where the deals are geographically, placement, spot, what TV shows, what TV networks, uh, what the, where the deals are, because a lot of the times people aren't buying certain spots seasonally, right? Like maybe certain TV shows have a hard time selling advertising uh, during certain times of the year, and that means they're gonna be on liquidation sale basically, because if they can't sell it, it's considered a remnant. And so you wanna see what remnant spots are available that you can actually book right? And by book, I mean, all right, I'll take that remnant spot on that game show at 10 o'clock at night on the weekends for the next six weeks in Pittsburgh, okay? If no one else is buying it, there's a good deal on it. 
And so you need to understand where those are and you have to ask, otherwise they're not going to tell you, okay? And that's why you want a great relationship with your account rep because you can say to your account rep, hey, that game show uh, Remnant Inventory worked really well for me. Now I know it's not going to work if we don't get 80% off. So let me know when similar inventory like that becomes available and I'll snap it up. And they'll be like, okay, great, I'll make a note. And then in their CRM, when they're reviewing what's available, they see that game shows are on the cheap. They give you a call, you smash out a campaign, maybe even have your TV commercial from last time ready to go and you just run it. There's no work, right? Now, another option that you have is negotiating for mixed media. So if you're talking about local markets, like um, a specific city, you can buy ad spots on their local channels and uh, the local distribution partners in that specific city. So most cities have their own like little TV stations that do the local news and do all the other stuff. And they're responsible for a lot of the placements of advertising in those local markets. So what you can do is buy the placements on TV and ask for a discount. If they don't give you a discount, ask them for mixed media placement instead. And what they can do is get your banners or your ads on the local news websites and other properties they have on the internet as like a bonus. And so you wanna ask if they can hook you up with any mixed media. Now you never wanna make your purchasing decision for your TV spots based on a mixed media play. So if they're like, yeah, you gotta pay full price, but we'll throw in this mixed media, and you're like, great, that's like free calls, um, you need to assume that whatever mixed media they offer you to sweeten the deal is gonna produce zero dollars. Now, if it'll produce zero dollars and you're still happy with the deal, the mixed media is gravy and you should run with it. But if they try to throw in mixed media instead of bringing the cost down and you think, well, maybe if I get some calls from the mixed media placements, it'll make this work, you're making a mistake. Okay, now going through an agency can sometimes yield you cheaper spots. And so do not be scared of brokers with TV networks, okay? Brokers can help you out in this space and they're not always a bad thing because if your advertising budget can't command a direct relationship and even if it can, it's probably not bigger than these brokers and agencies spend on an annual basis. And so what they're doing is going to the TV networks and saying, you know, we spend a hundred million a year for our clients. We'll set that as the minimum. We want a set percentage discount and access to whatever preferential terms. And you are never going to get anything like that. So a lot of the times the brokers, including their markup, which can be substantial, um, is still cheaper than getting it anywhere else. So you need to do your due diligence and your research and talk to a bunch of brokers and agencies because you can make more money. Now, you also need to negotiate prime time versus off hours. And you need to figure out what the difference in viewership is between prime time and off hours. For some of these more obscure TV networks, the differential isn't that big, but the price difference is huge. And so you need to at least take a look at it. It's not always gonna be that way. It's not a rule of thumb. Just make sure you do your research and ask about prime time versus off hours. And different networks and brokers may have different definitions of what prime time and off hours actually means. And so ask them how the flow throughout the day changes the pricing for the spots. And then you'll find out, oh, so in the morning before people go on their commute, it's one spot. And during the day, daytime TV is another. And then evening time, that's like dinner time-ish is another. And then you have night TV and then late night TV and then late, late night TV. And then like the infinite infomercial time, which is my favorite, but um, it may not work for you unless you have uh, a already proven campaign. Now, what I'm gonna do here is run you through a bunch of uh, television advertising examples. And I'm a big proponent of history of advertising. So I like to study the origins of advertising, how it happens, what campaigns were successful in the past many, many years ago, because a lot of the same principles apply today. They just have to be reworked. And there's no reason to reinvent the wheel. If you're coming out with a similar product that had an amazing advertising campaign 20 years ago, there's no reason why that same type of advertising campaign wouldn't work today. 
And in most likely, most people aren't doing that. So there's a lot of value in looking at uh, advertising campaigns. So this one right here is one I saw uh, in a hotel room at a convention a little while ago with my business partner. And what the reason I took a screenshot, the reason I liked it is because I realized it was made using Final Cut or Camtasia or something. I can't be certain. But if you look here, all they did was do some text and some text animation. So I apologize for not having a video, but it slid into from the right and then it slides out from the bottom up and that's it. And then the woman talks. And so the woman is from one of those companies that just makes the video for you. And so they probably spent 500 bucks on her and that's it. And then they made their commercial with just the text sliding in and out and the phone number is across the bottom the entire time, which is the way you should do it. The one thing that they didn't do well is they didn't have a call to action in there. I would have wrote, written call now colon phone number. And then at the end, I would have had her say, so pick up the phone and dial the number, but blah, 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 right? They didn't do that, but their campaign ran over and over and over again. And so it must be successful. Now, one thing you'll notice here about their phone number is they're selling medical insurance to older people and medical supplies to older people. And so they have a true 800 number with a repeating pattern in it. And so this is a high value phone number. Uh, Ringba has these in their inventory. We can lease them to you, but they vary in price. This something like this would probably cost, I don't know, 150 to $250 a month to rent, but it's worth it, okay? They cost thousands of dollars to acquire. And so don't think we just have these things lying around and we didn't pay for them, but what you get is a memorable phone number. And when someone sees this, especially if they're in the older demographics, they trust it because it's a true 800 number and because it has a pattern in it. Now, if you can get a phone number that's like 800-225-5000, old people think that's like a government agency and they trust the hell out of it. We have a few numbers like that too. We lease those out for substantially more. But if you're gonna run a TV campaign that's big, you need a strong phone number like that because it provides trust. And you're probably gonna need a bunch of them unless you have your markets already proven. And so if you're testing a bunch of different markets, what you have to do is use a bunch of different phone numbers that are high quality, um, maybe not as good as this one while you're proving it out. And then once you know which markets work, you flip to the like super strong phone number and then you just have your campaign and you don't touch it. But by using different phone numbers in different spots, during different shows, during different, different uh, geographic regions into different demographic groups, maybe even hundreds of phone numbers, just like on the internet, you're gonna know what spots actually produce for you and you just cut the ones that don't. And so if you want true 800 numbers, those are not terribly expensive. I think we charge in bulk $4 up to maybe $10 a month for a couple of them, uh, or maybe a little bit more, somewhere in that range. And you can rent these uh, true 800 numbers for TV radio out of home from us relatively cheap and they're uh, much more successful. I mean, if you have one additional call because of that trust factor, you more than paid for the phone number. So don't try and cheap out with the quality of your phone numbers if you're spending all this money on TV advertising, okay? Because it does make a difference when it comes to your ROI. And we don't even really make any money on these numbers. We own a giant portfolio of them. We spend a ton of money on it just so you guys can use it. And so we're just recouping our costs. We don't actually care about making money by renting these phone numbers out. It's just, we want them available to you guys so that if you're gonna run the campaigns, you have a competitive advantage. Uh, we make our money on the minutes and the volume and that's really where our head is focused. So don't be scared of paying more for these things. Talk to your Ringba rep and they can totally hook you up. Now, uh, one of my favorite campaigns back in the day was Miss Cleo. Okay, I think they're hilarious and we're gonna play them and we're gonna talk about uh, what she says in these videos. But first, let's take a look at the phone numbers. These are two separate commercials that ran concurrently, but on different networks and different spots. And what you'll notice is she has different phone numbers in different ads so she can track what's really going on. Now, Miss Cleo is defunct, it's gone now, but the advertising at the time was absolutely genius. So let's take a look at it. Who, who asked you to go out of town? The stupid young one or the married one? The married one. That's what we thought. 
don't go. You hear me? Hmm. And you know what? You're not listening to me because I see you going. <laughs> I see you going. I'm just telling you, I'm trying to help you to avoid the heartache. Don't go blindly through life. Let me use the power of the tarot to show you the way. Call me now for your free reading. Call 1-800-355-3765. Now, one thing I want to note about that is the voice at the end. They had the male voice do it uh, with the deep announcer style voice. The reason they did that is because it's authoritative. And what you'll notice is it was entirely a call to action. He was like, call now. And when he said it, it was even a little bit forceful, but his tone of voice didn't make it scary. It made it authoritative. And that's why they put it at the end. It actually bumped their conversion rate up when they did that. You'll also notice in the frames towards the end that they had call now, so a call to action, and then free, they use the word free, which is very effective if you can. Um, and then the phone number was on there the entire time, and then the guy said the phone number in an authoritative fashion. And so um, that causes conversion. And all of those tactics still work today, even though this is from the 1990s. Don't you really want to know? Okay, I was wondering who the father of my baby was. All right, let's take a look. The Miss Cleo DNA test. I don't know. <laughs> I'm solely searching for the father of your baby. Oh, it's the one that's very unpleasant, okay? Okay. Um, and he's also the one that had another girlfriend while he was sleeping with you. Yes, he did. Yep, that's him. That's the daddy. Okay. But you knew that. I wasn't sure. I don't know how. The baby looks just like him. Yes, he does. Yeah, so you were in denial. Because he has a funny little chin, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, and the baby have that same little chin. Oh, my God. Ooh. The cards can reveal things that you will never see by yourself. Call me now for your free tarot reading. Call 1-800-980-8637. Oh man, I want to clap. That's like art, okay? <laughs> All right, so you'll notice at the bottom that they said for entertainment purposes only, which means that the caller was complete bullshit. It was so much bullshit that she even laughed at herself while she was doing it. Like, I can't believe that people are gonna take this seriously. And she does her whole run through. There's a call to action. She tells you to call. And then on the screen, they tell you to call. And then the announcer voice guy tells you to call in the authoritative way. Um, and so this was an incredibly well done and super successful campaign. They even had the person call in over the phone to record it so that it sounded like she was live on the phone while on TV. Now, all of this would cost all of about $50. I, nothing, nothing to produce this. You need a table and an iPhone or whatever camera phone you got, tripod, mic, record the phone call part through Ringba. I, don't, I, I mean, this is just a really amazing uh, commercial. And they made millions of dollars with this. I'm not talking about a little bit of millions. I'm talking about like yacht money, okay, with these commercials. And there's absolutely no reason why you can't do this with auto insurance and payday loans and every vertical that we've talked about in this program. And so these are really great examples of what used to work, what absolutely still will work today, um, and will work in any industry. You just have to follow the structure. And the structure is real simple. Phone number that's authoritative on the bottom. They make their pitch. They put a real client testimonial in it. Real client testimonial. And then they use calls to action. They don't have a ton of text here. They leave the phone number up the whole time. It's just a very simple formula. We'll notice that it applies to other campaigns as well. All right, next, I want to talk about televangelism. And so I think these are incredible commercials. Now, the Peter Popoff Ministries make tens of millions of dollars a year in profit. Uh, and he lives very, very well, okay? And this stuff is on late night TV, um, but it is essentially a pay per call campaign. When you call the number, he takes your information, he gets you into a direct mail cycle, and then they continue to call. Uh, some of his competitors actually have live prayer lines that are paper call, effectively. People call in, uh, they listen to people's problems, they ask them for donations, say God's gonna help. Now, this is a very predatory campaign, and so this is for illustrative purposes only, 
But my point here is that you literally can sell anything pay per call on television. And so it is a really amazing medium. Now let's take a look at some of these marketing gems. You had four brain tumors? I had four brain surgeries, and the proof is right here in the back of my head. I stayed in the hospital for eight months. When I came home two weeks later, my husband was killed. His family wrote the military and told the military I was dead, took all my money. I just got a warrants letter for $390,000. $390,000? used Reverend Peter Popov throughout his entire life and ministry to bring miraculous deliverance to hundreds of thousands of people around the world. Look, look at that man go! Woo! Man. Oh, I tell you, Jesus made you dance like that. Yeah! Yeah! You say, is that gonna happen to me? Yes! You know this shit? I tell you, I'm gonna make the devil mad. I'm gonna kill this in the This just makes the devil mad that I love to do it. She said, throw it! I tell you, that just burns the devil up. All right, she said, it's on. Make the devil mad. I'm in first Hallelujah. She said, go ahead and do it. The devil is a liar. <laughs> All right, so we won't do the full 10 minutes. We'll link this in case you do. I highly recommend it. It's kind of obscene and it's incredible. But the fact remains that these TV campaigns have been running for almost 20 years, okay? And they're paper call campaigns. And so if you can sell this on TV, you can sell literally anything. And the same process applies he's got the phone number up the entire time beautiful phone number it's a repeater okay nine three eight three um and he used he uses different phone numbers for different markets to track his online advertising and he uses real client testimonials and then great music and changes the volume around and he's excited in those commercials like i'm excited to watch him okay and so people get all jazzed up and they call and they get his free miracle spring water and only God knows what happens after that, right? All right, let's check out another one. God's will for us has always been to be in health and to prosper. And he's using the miracle spring water to do just that. Now I sent for the miracle spring water and I want to let you know that God gave me a $50,000 debt cancellation. I was delivered from all different type, high blood pressure, fibromyalgia, uh, you name it, God delivered me from it. Get the spring water, it really works. The doctors had given her up for dead, and her husband brought her the miracle spring water. And my husband brought the spring water up, and I drank it. And I'm speaking today. I had no speech, totally paralyzed, and now I'm testifying that through the miracle of God and your ministry. Listen, I'm she had no speech. Morning. She's speaking today. Let me send you your free packet of miracle spring water. It's absolutely free, no obligation. Take a moment to jot down the number on your screen and call now. I'll send you your miracle spring water absolutely free without any obligation. You're next in line for a miracle. All right, so you'll notice on that one that there was no phone number. And the reason there was no phone number is because this was the pre-edit version. I managed to find it on the internet and I wanted to use it to uh, display to you that basically what they do is take that blank and they put a bunch of different phone numbers on the bottom and render 10, 20, 50, 100 different versions of the TV commercial with different phone numbers. And then they use a platform to track their calls. Now, unfortunately, the Pop-Off Ministries are not a Ringba customer, but they are using some type of call tracking to track where their phone calls and their TV placements are coming from because these guys are actually highly sophisticated marketers, even though their product is, well, you saw it. And so, um, but the same tactics apply to the creation of the videos. You'll notice that part of that video was done using just text moving in an editor, and then they do the overlays and post-production using maybe even Adobe Premiere or iMovie. Um, but you can do it with any of those software packages we talked about. Next are medical alert campaigns. Uh, and one is from uh, a while ago, long time ago. And the next one is more recent. 
But this is one of the most iconic TV campaigns for pay per call that I believe has ever been run because I remember seeing this as a kid, like a very small kid. And then I recently saw one of these commercials at a trade show uh, on TV. And so the reason I say that is because I don't actually get cable TV at the house. I don't watch commercials, it's a shame. Uh, so whenever I go to a trade show, my partners and I usually lock up for a couple late nights in the hotel room instead of partying, and we just watch TV commercials to see how people are doing their advertising. Lame, I know, but uh, we're very into advertising. Recently, when I became deathly ill, I was able to summon an ambulance, my next door neighbor, my family, and my doctor without picking up a telephone. I used this remote control to contact LifeCall, my 24-hour emergency medical response service. Watch, you just press this button and speak into the air and... I'm having chest pain. I'm calling paramedics and your family, Mr. Miller. I've fallen and I can't get up. We're sending help immediately, Mrs. Fletcher. See, protect yourself with LifeCall and you're never alone. To get complete free information by mail about this affordable medical emergency response system, call toll-free now. Life Call can save your life, so call to get free details by mail right away. For free information about Life Call, call 1-800-872-9100. That's 1-800-872-9100. Cool. So at the end, we had the authoritative announcer voice, the call to action. She said, call now. He said, call now. The screen said, call now. The phone number was across the street, uh, screen for most of the advertisement. And, you know, this is from the early 90s, I believe. And these companies, and there's a bunch of different brands that do this, uh, they make hundreds of millions of dollars a year. And they built the whole business on television, paper call advertising, essentially. So it's really a powerful thing. Now, in the next one, you can see that Medical Alert is a, a Connect America company established in 1977. So that's how far back this goes, and it still works today. And what you'll notice is the tactics used in this are essentially the same as the ones in the uh, Peter Popoff commercial and the ones in the Miss Cleo commercial. It's the same format, the same style. It doesn't matter what vertical or industry, everything sort of functions the same way, new or old, process works exactly the same. As far as I can tell, mom woke up and she couldn't breathe. Luckily, I had my medical alert button. I pushed it. Help! I don't know how they heard me. Medical alert saved my life. Introducing medical alert. When seconds count, count on us for help at the push of a button. It's easy to install, it's waterproof, and has a 600-foot range. I feel so much better knowing that Medical Alert sends help at the push of a button for any emergency, fire, break-in, or of course, a medical alert. I just know they're there for us. Call now for your Medical Alert system. Order right now and get this second button. Plus, a secure outdoor lockbox to keep a key for emergencies, free. Being independent is a wonderful gift especially when it is so easy. You had to wait for grandma to pick up the phone so they had that extra time in there. But <laughs> you'll notice the exact same thing, right? Phone number across the bottom, deep authoritative announcer voice that says call now, customer testimonials, I mean, realistically speaking, you could create this commercial for under $1,000, no sweat. You got a bunch of uh, stock video in there. You got some royalty-free music that overlays. These actors, you can hire on Fiverr, and if you wanna send them the actual product or some product material to use in the video, just mail it to them. If you want it back, give them a return label. They'll ship it back to you. And so you can absolutely have them do that and then use some of the stock video and then create the overlays and then hire a voiceover artist to do the announcer voice thing on Fiverr even. Um, and you, I don't even think $1,000. I mean, if I had to make this exact commercial in five days, probably could get away with it $200, $250 if I like wanted to push the cost envelope. I'd probably try and get the quality up a little bit so call it worst case, $500 uh, 
and you're running a professional TV commercial that's uh, on TV. You know, you may need to hire an actor. They have like the announcer lady with the testimonial person. So this is more complicated. Go recruit your grandma and get your sister and just look at someone else's advertising and you can produce something very similar pretty easily. Let's take a look at some debt relief. One in five Americans carry a balance that has been charged interest rates above 20%. Sometimes they even raise rates on outstanding balances, even when you've paid your bills on time. Debt Help Center USA has announced its new National Debt Relief Program. For those with $10,000 or more in credit card or medical bills, Debt Help Center USA may help dramatically lower interest rates. Your bills may be cut by thousands, saving you hundreds every month. The percentage of debt reduces almost 50%. Don't try to do it on your own. Get support now. Get support today. Call the toll-free hotline right now. 800-621-4011. There is still reason for hope in America, and here are some of its faces. We may be struggling, but we'll get through this. Yes, you still have hope. Debt Help Center USA and a debt help plan that really works. Faces of Hope, brought to you by Debt Help Center USA. 800-621-4011. Cool. So the thing I loved about this commercial when I saw it was it's actually two commercials in the exact same spot. And they did that to just repeat their message again. And the break in between the two uh, signaled to the listener that, or the person watching the TV show, that it was a separate advertisement. And so cognitively, their brain picked it up as two advertisements. So they got two full impressions and watches in the same advertisement, which is genius. Um, most of this was done using stock footage though. There's really nothing to this advertisement uh, the other thing that I found interesting too was the fact that they had the scroller on the bottom and then they laid it out like a newscaster. So they most likely ran this campaign on like CNBC or Fox News or MSNBC or some news related station that would let them do it. Um, and then it almost feels like an endorsement. And then they used Obama footage in there. They had a disclaimer at the top, uh, but then you know, they used every trick in the book, essentially, to try and make this convert. And they did a really nice job with it. So they have the strong, authoritative announcer voice in two different ways, two different themed commercials, people smiling, customer testimonials, the phone number across the entire time, uh, sound effects to keep people engaged. It was a really good commercial. Millions of consumers just like you have over $10,000 in credit card debt. No matter how hard you try, you can't even make the minimum monthly payment. How would you like relief from those debts once and for all? At the Consumer Debt Legal Network, if you qualify, we may be able to help you reduce your debt using our straightforward three-step plan. First, call the number on your screen for a free, no-obligation consultation. We're not linked to any lender, so we'll always be on your side. Banks and credit card companies have legal representation, and so should you. Second, we'll help you find the right solution. In some cases, we can have your debt or interest rate reduced and help you avoid bankruptcy. Now, each case is unique, so call to find out the right solution for you. Third, within a short period of time, you could become completely debt-free. So if you owe over $10,000 in credit card debt and want legal representation to help get your financial life back on track, call the Consumer Debt Legal Network. This will be the most important call you make today. Call now, 888-465-7744. So after you've seen all these amazing 800 numbers and you see that one, you're like, ooh, there's a difference. It just feels a little different. And there's a little cognitive dissonance there. And so that alone can generate a few more phone calls and a couple more phone calls can be the difference between success and failure. Now these guys spend a little bit more money in production value. You can tell that this is not an actual courtroom. This is a sound stage of some kind. They just have this background. It may even be a green screen, I'm not sure but they paid some professional actors to do it. They had a script that was pretty well done. And then they used some royalty free music in the background. There was nothing to that. At the end, when it was time, you notice that they raised the volume of the music after the announcer voice guy. And there was a crescendo that like brought the end of the commercial uh, to a head. 
And so they did a great job with that. That commercial produced a, a lot of money for them, I have no doubt. Um, and it probably didn't cost that much. You know, the one, the one on the left was definitely cheaper and was a lot more editing. And so if you have time and you can do a little bit with your editing software and learn the ropes, uh, you can save a lot of money by doing the editing yourself or you can contract it, you know, um, for a couple hundred bucks, you can hire someone on Upwork to do the editing for a one minute commercial. Uh, if you don't want to do it yourself, these guys probably spent a few thousand dollars on the production of this. Um, but the results, uh, probably showed maybe less, maybe, maybe they were equal. I don't actually know because when I see these two commercials, the one on the right builds more trust. The one on the left was actually uh, done by different style of direct marketer. Um, and so I don't know which one won, but you can see the merits of both options. And that's why testing is important. But you can see if you want to test two commercials like this, you got to make two commercials like this. And then you have to test it in a bunch of markets to see how it's going to work. So it is a process. I was denied my social security disability benefits. I need my disability benefits, but I have no idea how to even get started. I'm Dr. Bill Latour, a lawyer for disability applicants. I'm both a psychologist and a lawyer. I'll use my legal and medical expertise to help you through the entire social security disability process. Call me right now. Dr. Bill got me approved. Dr. Bill got me approved, and now I'm getting my checks. Call me right now. I know what to do. Call 1-800-803-5090. Now, what I like about that is when he used the testimonials who were paid actors, uh, there was a little text piece in there that said dramatization, which means that it's fiction. But he only has to disclose that once. So the first time you saw the people, it said dramatization. And then when they came back and they were like, call Bill, he's the best, and actually gave their testimonial, it didn't say dramatization on it. And so he's a lawyer. He did a very nice job following the rules and getting it as close to deceptive as possible. But um, again, it was really nice. He's got a good phone number and he was in the video. He used his credentials to promote himself. Um, and obviously if you're doing a legal campaign, you can't use the lawyer's exact name, but you can do a very similar general commercial and it will come across uh, just as good. So that was a great example of a quick short spot uh, for legal. Here's another one. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, on your mark, Get set, go. I'm attorney Ken Nugent. If you've been hurt in a car wreck, go on, grab the phone now and call me. Come on, let's go. If you're hurt, why wait? It's only going to get worse. Go now. The insurance lawyers are going. Why are you still sitting still? Get it going. Let's go. Go now. My car wreck problems are gone. Ken settled my case for $100,000. Now, I can't guarantee you that much, but if you've been hurt, get going and call me. One call, that's all. Now, what I like about Ken there is he has the one call, that's all. And so you should absolutely put jingles and different sounds and repetitive sounds uh, inside of your commercials if there's audio. So I host the Paper Caller Show, and we had a rap group actually write a Paper Caller song for the show, and we play part of that song in the beginning. And the audio is a little bit off, uh, and it's a little bit slow paced and it's not what you're used to hearing and two different types of reactions come from that but one thing is for sure everyone remembers it and so the key here is creating something that's memorable that fits your audience and so that's something different or a jingle or a tagline at the end that people can remember and so that's one way to get in people's heads especially with repetition so if it's going to be repeated over and over and over and over and over and over again then you want to end with a tagline like that. Now you'll also notice that the people in this commercial were being very urgent, okay? They were like, call now, go, 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 hurry. And so what they're trying to do is an elicit a fight or flight response from you. And if you get that little jolt of adrenaline, you're like, ah, I pick up the phone and call. And so you want some urgency depending on the type of campaign if you want people to act immediately and they emphasize all the words that were related to urgency like go and now um, and that actually works that's how humans think and if you can jolt them a little bit that's where you're going to get uh that little extra in your conversion rate let's take a look at some auto insurance ones and these are big brands 
Um, these are not specifically pay per call campaigns, but I will say that I really liked what they did here. And I just wanted to show you guys um, why this is great advertising. So, uh, what do you say? I say savings. You can't skip this Geico ad because it's already over. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Oh, hold the door. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Can you set two? Can you? Okay, so <laughs> the reason I love this ad, and if you want to use a tactic like this, you should, and this one's specifically for uh, digital TV, so YouTube. On YouTube, people can skip the ad. And so what they did is they made a five second commercial that said, you can't skip this ad because it's already over. And you know what happens? Even for me, guard drop down. I'm like, oh, ad's over. They just told you the ad was over and then they're like, Geico, save money. And so you dropped your defenses and then they walked right in and gave you their pitch. And so that was brilliant advertising by whatever agency they used. And you can use the very similar tactic in just about any type of video advertising. So I wanted to highlight that. Let's look at another one. Don't thank me, thank the savings. You can't skip this Geico ad because it's already over. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And then they tell you it's over. So you don't go skip it and then you keep staring at their brand. So I have no doubt that people watch that commercial to the end once they said, you can't skip it, it's already over. You're like, oh, can't skip it. Oh, Geico. Oh, I'm still watching. Oh, wait a second. The ad's still running. Okay. And that may seem ridiculous. You may be watching this going, Adam, I would never fall for that shit. I'm like, maybe you, but I did the first time. I noticed my defenses drop. It was an incredible feeling because I was watching for it. And our goal here is not to convince you that this is good. It's large groups of people. And when you have large groups of people that see advertising, they're no longer people, they're a statistic. And so you can mathematically prove the success of campaigns like this. And that, I think that's a good time to highlight something. If you keep seeing an advertising campaign, whether it's online, on TV, on YouTube, on wherever, it's working. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep running it. So when you see ads running and running and running and running, Pay attention, because that is a recipe for success. I never thought that much about health insurance, but if I had an accident or got sick, but now that DC Health Link is here, I've got a plan. I used to be covered under my parents' plan, but now I'm on my own. So I'm searching DC Health Link for my plan. I'm a doctor and a high school counselor. So I know how important health insurance is for everyone in the DC community. Go to DC Health Link to compare affordable health insurance plans side by side to choose the right one for you. Have you got a plan? Now, these guys put up a phone number. There was no call to action in there that I really think they did a good job with. But this campaign ran for a while in some local markets. And so it must have been successful or they weren't monitoring their metrics. Uh, both is probably true. But um, they could have improved that process. So here's an example of a well-produced video that didn't really understand marketing that well. And then conversely, here's a very interesting commercial where they definitely had uh, some marketers do it. Oh, hi there. I'm John with AffordaCare Insurance. Here at AffordaCare, we're all about providing you with affordable health insurance so you can spend your money on more important things like a freaking crossbow. Awesome. Unlike some other healthcare providers you may know, we're actually making insurance great again by offering hundreds of plans from all the best companies in the world. Gives you the freedom to choose whatever the flip you want in an insurance policy. Woo freedom. Woo freedom indeed, Average Joe. Woo freedom indeed. What kind of freedom are we talking about? Well, other insurance providers only let you see certain doctors within their network. At AffordaCare, we don't care what doctor you see. We'll let you choose whoever you want, like him or him. I'm going with her. Heck yeah, you are. Most insurance companies require lengthy contracts and they require you to wait for specific enrollment periods to sign up. Fortacare don't care about contracts or enrollment periods. Our plans are month to month. You can sign up whenever. If you have a phone, do it right now. All right. You're all set to take on those level five rapids, big guy. Awesome. 
You can forget about insanely high deductibles or having to meet specific requirements to qualify. Because Affordicare don't care. We've got plans for everyone, including zero dollar deductible plans. Seems like good news for you. Huh? The point is, Affordicare is all about giving you the freedom to choose your own affordable health insurance the way you want it. And Affordicare don't care about having to do whatever it takes to make that happen. Visit us today at affordicareinsurance.com. <laughs> More like a Ford of Swords. Right. <laughs> That's probably a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> Back off, pretty boy! <laughs> Okay, so they did a great job with this because it's very engaging. Now, clearly millennials made this, and so the millennials don't understand call to action very well. Uh, they had a phone number, it was very small, it was at the end of the video, they didn't repeat it over and over again, they didn't repeat the website over and over again. And so what they missed was the opportunity to get their viewer to show up at their door. However, the creativity inside that video is excellent. So if you can combine the production quality and creativity of this guy's video with the actual experience of a digital marketer putting your calls to action in there, make sure that your message is conveyed well. I would even add the phone number across the entire time. Um, you know, I would have said even in text like flash, don't call to buy crossbows, right? If your audience is young and you wanna make them laugh, do it, but give them the information to contact you to actually buy. And so these guys screwed that part up, but they made a great commercial regardless. All right, so let's talk about finance ads. Now, these are some pretty great ads. They're higher production value ads, so they had more money to do it, um, but they're, they're really well done. Not getting enough cash back with that credit card? Turn to the nerds. Looking for the perfect mortgage? Turn to the nerds. Oops, <laughs> sorry about that. <clears throat> Easily compare credit cards, mortgages, savings accounts, and more at nerdwallet.com. So that was a really short spot, but they have nerdwallet.com on the bottom. They show nerd all over and they're like, turn to the nerds. And so that'll get in your head. Like, oh, turn to the nerds, right? You Google turn to the nerds. They're gonna show up number one in Google. And so what you can also do is do something like that where if someone Googles it uh, and the keywords around it, you can get your site listed for that because they're non-competitive. It doesn't make any sense. Like who, who Googles turn to the nerds, right? And so drives traffic to their website, they get their conversions. So there's no phone numbers in there, but I really like the tactic of branding that way, right? Like just getting it in people's heads and face in an unexpected way that's how you build a brand and that's how you get people to actually take action. My roommate? Oh, she's great. <laughs> she's terrible. And that's the perfect avocado latte. Like, hashtag terrible. So guys, this look works for everyone, even people with really oily skin. What? Put your hand down. Peace. Love. Do you mind? So I signed up with Credit Karma to help me build my credit. Now I can finally move out. Oh, hashtag sad face. Cute sad face. Be cute. Keep moving forward, Credit Karma. Cool, so these ran online, they ran on TV, they're great advertisements. And the way they rely on you finding them is then Googling Credit Karma. And so they spend a lot more money creating that brand and getting into their viewers' heads than a specific direct response campaign. But the tactics they used uh, were to tell a story that was extremely relatable. It was funny, I get giggled the first time. And so I remember it. And that's the key when creating a brand campaign is remembering it. Now this same type of thing will work if you put a phone number on the bottom and then drive people to a call to action at the end. And I think Credit Karma could have actually done a better job of getting their brand into people's heads. And this is what happens when you don't combine direct response with creativity. You get something very creative and brandable, but it doesn't get the results necessarily that the agency wanted to achieve because they're trying to be too passive about remembering the brand. And so with direct response, you wanna be extremely careful with that. If you don't do the call to actions, 
and you don't put the information directly in front of the people that are seeing it, you're not gonna get the results you want no matter how creative you are. And so don't be afraid of your calls to action. You have to put them in there. And that's why I said, watch Fox News for an entire day because you'll see nothing but call to action after call to action again. Because if you don't tell people what to do, they're not gonna do it. And people are trained from birth to respond to authority and to do what they're told. And that's why we call it a call to action. We're telling people what to do. The average American visits about seven different websites before booking a hotel. I totally get that. We wanna make sure that we get a great hotel for the best price. But why only seven when there are so many more out there? Next time before you book, check on Trivago. Trivago compares live prices from more than 150 different websites to make sure that you find the best price for your ideal hotel. Hotel Trivago. Now, the Trivago guy has been very interesting. I saw these commercials come on. I didn't know how successful they were gonna be, but over time, what they did is build a brand. They have a colorful logo and this very casual guy. He's super casual, he's non-threatening. He has a deep authoritative voice and he's like, go to Trivago. And that's it. So he just keeps telling people, go to Trivago over and over again in all the commercials, very casually with his deep authoritative voice and it ended up being a very successful ad campaign. All right, Trivago, find me a hotel where I can wake up with a view of the ocean. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Trivago. And that's it. And same type of thing, colorful logo at the end. It's a branding campaign. But I put this in here to illustrate that you could actually do most of this with stock video and recording on your screen a little bit and a bit of editing. And so a commercial like this isn't gonna cost $10,000 to produce. You could theoretically produce this commercial or something very similar to that with a couple hundred bucks or even you know less than a thousand for sure, depending on what you wanna do. It's just some royalty free music, some stock video and some editing. So you may have 250 bucks in editing if you use an outsourced editor on Upwork and then maybe 250 bucks in stock footage, $15 in stock music and you're out the door for like 500, 550 bucks. And so it's not that complicated to make great TV commercials uh, without a huge budget. Even as a major brand, I mean, they probably spent more than this but I'm just trying to illustrate that you don't have to.